Hello everyone and welcome back. In a recent video, I wrote some code in an Android Studio project to produce a two by two grid of buttons that equally share the available screen space using a constraint layout at runtime. Now, I had already solved this in a previous, previous video using constraint layout at compile time using XML. I wanted to show you all how you could do this at runtime using Java's OOP interfaces. So here's the solution to that problem. I said there were two ways to do this, one using constraint layout at layout params and one using the constraint set convenience class. We used the constraint set convenience class in the previous video to solve the problem. We created a new constraint set. We cloned it from the constraint layout, which is a subclass of constraint layout. And then we wrote this method called hardcoded two by two grid of buttons where we created the four buttons we set up all of their constraints using the constraint set, as you can see here. There were a lot of them. After this method finishes executing, we've set up all of our constraints via the constraint set, then we apply this constraint set to our custom constraint layout that we've been building in this constructor here. Now, this is the preferred approach because the documentation says it's the preferred approach. Here I am on approach number one's documentation, constraint layout dot layout params, and it says the class contains the different attributes specifying how a view wants to be laid out inside of a constraint layout for building up constraints at runtime using constraint set is recommended. So that's why I did constraint set first. All I wanna do in this video is adapt our constraint set solution to not use constraint set and instead just use constraint layout layout params directly so we can see what the constraint set is doing for us and also how we could essentially set the layout parameters ourselves if we wanted or needed to. All right, so here's my plan. My plan is more copying and pasting, which of course, as programmers, makes us a little bit uncomfortable, uh, but we're doing a lot of copying and pasting for learning sake. I'm gonna copy this whole hard-coded two by two grid of buttons, and I'm gonna paste it, and I'm going to adopt this method signature to essentially no longer accept the constraint set, so now hard-coded two by two grid of buttons is overloaded. Uh, in this particular implementation, it's only accepting uh, context. So let's call this method and not pass in the constraint set. All right, our goal with this is to do this first approach, which is not the preferred approach, uh, but still fun to learn anyways constraint layout dot layout params class to directly manipulate constraint values. All right, we don't have to change anything in the solution for number one related to creating the buttons and adding them to the constraint layout. So all of this can stay the same. But down here, we don't have a constraint set anymore. So let's start by updating button one to no longer use the constraint set. What we need to do is declare a constraint layout dot layout params object for button one. So I'll call it layout params one. We have to pass in at least two arguments here representing the layout parameters width and height for this button we're going to apply the layout parameters to. So let's start by setting all the buttons to wrap content and then we'll come back and we'll set them to match constraint. And my font is really large, so it's kind of hard to see everything here. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm setting up, setting up layout parameters for button one such that its width is wrap content and its height is wrap content. Okay, I'm also gonna use layout params one to set up its four constraints, which I previously was using constraint set to set up. So here's how we do this. I have button one start going to parent start. I'm going to replace this with layout params one dot start to start constrains the start side of a child to the start side of a target child. All right, so the target child is the parent. I can no longer use this constraint set dot parent ID because I'm not using constraint set anymore, but as I said in the prior, prior video, we can just use get ID directly because our scope right now is 
inside of a non-static method of the my constraint layout class. So I can call get ID that will operate on this, which is going to be a current my constraint layout object. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and keep updating the rest of these connect methods to just set these values on the layout params one object directly. So I've got end to start going to button two. So layout params one dot end to start going to button two. I'll leave this commented out line right here this was me in the previous video saying, hey, this line of code here is equivalent to what we'd write in XML here. So I'll just leave this here because I think it's helpful. All right, moving on. So now we're doing top to top, going to target child parent. And the last one is bottom to top going to button three. Now that we've added four constraints to layout params one, we want to apply layout params one to button one here. So let's do button one dot set layout params. This is just like what we did on the constraint layout when we said it's layout params and we pass in layout params one. Now we've got a template for how we can use the constraint layout layout params class in order to set up constraints for a button or a child view in general. So now would be a good time to pause the video and try making the same updates I just made for button one, but for button two, three, and four. All right, I've got all four of my buttons set up with their four constraints each. So let's run this and see if we've got our nice two by two grid of buttons all set to wrap content showing up in the center of our app. And here they are. So all I need to do now to finish the demo is replace these generic view group dot layout params dot wrap content with the more, uh, more specific constraint layout dot layout params then layout params dot match constraint. Kind of a mouthful there. So let's do it. So I want constraint layout dot layout params, and then I want constraint layout dot layout params dot match constraint. Do this for the width and for the height. And then I'm gonna be a lazy programmer here and just update all of these layout params by copying and pasting. No more wrap content. I want them all to be match constraint. So now when I run this, I should see what I showed you at the beginning of the video, which is the same demo we did with constraint set last video. Two by two grid of buttons equally sharing the available real estate, and it looks good in both portrait and in landscape. Awesome. So this was just another demo of constraint layout, hopefully helping you get started working with it programmatically. Recall that according to the documentation, the preferred approach is not what we're doing here. It is instead to use that convenience class, which is called constraint set. Check out my previous video for a demo on how to get started using it. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.